Hi guys, welcome to my pla uh, Plax, Pax Unplugged haul video. Great start. Um, so I thought it would be a, to, fun to do a video about all the games I got at Pax Unplugged. I didn't want to do that in my weekly playback video because then that video would become super long because I'll be discussing all the games I played. So, um, so yeah, so I'm doing a separate video for it. So I got uh, a majority of the games I got are review copies and then I bought a couple of games. So I will first discuss the games that I purchased and then I'll go into the games that I received as review copies. And then I'll talk a little bit about the experience um, at, of going to Pax Unplugged as a content creator for the first time because I had gone twice before as just a board gamer who you know was basically unknown in the board gaming world and so now I got to go as a content creator in a totally different experience. So yeah so I'll talk a bit about that at the end and some of the cool people I got to meet. So the first game I purchased was Micro Macro Crime City Full House. I had not played the original Micro Macro but I had heard so much about it so I got to play this one at PAX Unplugged. I played first me and the person I was with. We did the um, like the tutorial one, the easy one, and then we did the hardest one, which was the full house one, I believe. Um, yeah, and um, I'll talk a little bit about the experience of playing it in my weekly playback video. It's a it's a bit interesting how our experience in playing it, but I really liked it. So I wanted to buy this because this is something that you can do even solo and it's just super cool. It's like a Where's Waldo for adults, basically. So yeah, so I purchased this at PAX. And then the next game I purchased, I only purchased two games actually, and the rest are review copies, is Sweetlandia. So I was walking by the Ultra Pro booth, which, you know, I have a lot of sleeves that are Ultra Pro sleeves, and I had no idea that they publish board games, and I had a little bit of a chat with them, and they're like, yeah, a lot of people don't know that they actually publish board games. Um, Someone on Twitter who um, is a friend of mine on Twitter, Jesse, he um, had actually posted a photo of this game one time and I thought it looked really pretty. I absolutely love the artwork. Um, I'll show you guys the game in my weekly playback video because I did have a chance to play this. Um, so yeah, this is just a simple card game for two to six players and I bought this. It was on sale for $10 at Packs and Plugged. So those are the two games I purchased. Now I will go into all of the review copies. Oh, actually, before I do that, I, this was not at PAX Unplugged, but it came in the same day I was leaving for PAX, so I'm going to mention it. The Shipwreck Arcana, I mentioned this um, in my last weekly playback video. It's like a deduction game uh, for two to something, two to five players. Um, I actually played this again at last night's game night. We really like this. I will be able to show you guys the inside of this game now, the cards and all the components, and hopefully explain it better because when I was re-watching my weekly playback video that I did the last time, I realized that some of the stuff I said could be a little bit confusing. So now that I have the game, I will be able to explain it a bit better. But I think that this is a really great um, uh, compact deduction game and I highly recommend I highly recommend buying it so I bought this from the publisher's website which is Merrill Morph Games um, so yeah so if you're interested in it they do have it for sale on their website and I would recommend you go to the website because some people on BGG are trying to sell it for an outrageous price okay so now I can go into the games that I received uh, review copies of so I'm going to start with the smaller games first. Um, first, um, I already took it out of the box. Where did I put the little thingy? Oh, here. So I finally got my review copy of the expansion to Fort Cats and Dogs. Um, so yeah, I think I was like one of the last few content creators who had not yet received a review copy of that, though I had um, created content, content of the original game when it was first coming out, the base game Fort. Um, so I already sleeved it and put it into the main box. Um, so let me see if I can just show you guys uh, some of it. So it comes with these cool cats that can wander into your yard if you meet certain conditions and then they can wander out of your yard. So I've already played this game once with the cats expansion, which I liked. I have not played with the multiple dogs that it comes with. They, it comes with a lot of dogs. So yeah, a bunch of dogs and it comes with these like dog houses. So I don't know what the dogs expansion is like yet. Um, and I'm assuming that you can kind of combine them. I don't know um, because again, I haven't played with the dogs expansion yet. Um, so yeah, so I got a review copy of Cats and Dogs, which I'm excited about because I've been wanting to uh, play with the dogs expansion and the cats expansion. So that is the first thing I got a review copy of. The next thing I will show you guys is um, 
Let's go to this. This is Widget Ridge, a steampunk deck building game with crazy inventions and lots of fun. So I was walking by this booth and um, it just looked so freaking cool. Like you guys know my logo has like uh, gears on it, the whole steampunk thing. And this booth had like this cool like steampunk hat. It had a couple of them and like it just looked really, really awesome. So I just started watching the designer of this game do a demo for two other people and it looked amazing. And so I handed him my business business card and I was like yeah I would really love to check this out and maybe do a live stream of this game because he mentioned that they do live streams of it so yeah so I was able to get a review copy of this game and apparently you can combine decks so this box alone is for one to two players but you can combine it with other decks to make it for like up to four players I believe um, so yeah it's a deck building game with really cool steampunk artwork and from what I can remember you're making like cool kinds of inventions like contraptions to try and reduce your opponent's health and that's basically like the gist of it and it just looked really good and so I really am excited to have gotten a review copy of this. Um, the publisher I believe is also called Widget Ridge so that's w-i-d-g-e-t-r-i-d-g-e dot com so again, for one to two players, it says it's a 30 minute playing time. Um, it has like a cool, I didn't get the player mat because I just got this as a review copy, but it has some expansions and a really, it has two different really cool playing, playing mats that you can choose from if you want. So yeah, so I'm super excited to play uh, Widget Ridge, Widget Ridge, Widget Ridge, <laughs> Widget Ridge. Okay, um, let's go on to uh mountain goats um so yeah so i stopped by the board game tables booth and got a demo of mountain goats and of course goat meeples had to check that out so yeah absolutely love these goat meeples that come in four different colors i wish they had purple goats but alas they do not um nice blue dice so yeah you're just trying to be like the goat at the top of a mountain it seemed like a really fun quick game for like two to four players two to five players excuse me so two to five players oh that's interesting should there be five different goat colors maybe not maybe you don't huh that's weird i only have four different goat co okay that's weird the back of the box says two to five players this says two to four players so that might be a typo because I was like, oh, I'm missing some goats then. So yes, yeah, so I picked up, um, I got a review copy of Mountain Goats. So I'm excited to play this. Again, that's by BoardGameTables.com. And uh, I probably should have mentioned designer names. So this is designed by Stefan Risthaus. Um, also from Board Game Tables, I got a copy of Kabuto Sumo, a review copy of this. Um, I was excited to get this because I am not a huge fan of dexterity games, but I've heard a lot about this one. So I definitely wanted to check out this game because people seem to love it. And, um, you know, I it was a good opportunity to pick it up because the designer has me blocked everywhere because, you know, I'm dangerous apparently. Um, so there was no way that the designer was going to have me check out this game since he has me blocked everywhere. So, um, yeah, so I got a review copy of it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to checking it out. I've already put together the table that you put the components on um, and you you know flick stuff off of it there's like this thing like this landing thing so yeah it comes with really nice components i'm looking forward to playing this and seeing what i think about it um and of course you know my opinion will be totally unbiased well not totally unbiased because i mean like the designer has me blocked but like at least you won't know i you know i'm not going to be gushing about it if i actually don't love it um because yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to checking this out so this is designed by tony miller um i like the artist uh i'm gonna butcher his name koan chai moria he's done artwork for some other games that i like i believe he did the artwork for the game um so you've been eaten which i covered for Oh god, Ludi Creations. Um, so yeah, so looking forward to checking out Kabuto Sumo, even though I'm not the biggest fan of dexterity games, but I've just heard so much about it, so I really want to check it out. Uh, the next thing I got a review copy of is the expansion, The Shard for Moonrakers. I actually haven't opened it up yet, so I have scissors here, so let's do that. Um, I absolutely love Moonrakers, and it was one of my top 10 games of last year. Probably one of my top 10 games of all time, honestly. So it was nice to stop by the booth and meet the um, the publishers. Um, so yeah, so it comes with some cards. 
So if you don't know about Moonrakers, it is published by Ivy Games. They publish really high quality. Oh, it has the sleeves in here too. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, they publish really high quality games um, and they are really good games. Like I actually really love their games. Um, Moonrakers is a negotiation deck building game. I absolutely love the fact that you can have a deck building game with a negotiation aspect to it. Super fun. I love the theme of it. It's like, you know, I don't come across a lot of space games with artwork that I like and with like play that that I like. So, um, you know, I've only come across a couple of space games that I really like, and this is one of them. So I absolutely love Moonraker. So I'm excited to have this expansion and play it again sometime. All right, let's move on to Radlands by Roxley. So I got a review copy of this game. I did not back it on Kickstarter because it was insanely expensive. And to be honest, the artwork looks really cool, but I wasn't sure. Um, I would enjoy it, but then everyone at Pax Unplugged was talking about how amazing this game is. So Radlands is, uh, who's the designer? I don't even see a designer name on the box. Let me see if it's on the back side or something. I don't see a designer name anywhere. Hmm. Maybe it's just published by Roxley, I don't know. Um, Okay, here we go. Daniel Pech Pech Pechnik, 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 I don't know. Um, so yeah, so the artwork is really cool. It's uh, a deck building game, I think. I think it's a deck building game, like some kind of competitive deck building game, I think, for like two players and it's got super cool artwork. So yeah, everyone was raving about this game. So I was really excited to get a retail copy for a review copy to check it out. So I really want to play this. So yeah, it's a two player game. Uh, Radlands is a competitive dueling card game about identifying and exploiting fiercely powerful card synergies. And yeah, I'm just really, really excited to play that. So that's from Roxley. Uh, let's go on to, okay, Nanga Parbat. Now, um, this is a Dr. Finn game. Um, Dr. Finn's games. Uh, I got a, a demo of this game from him and it looked really good and it's a two-player game. So in this game, the Sherpa people known for their exquisite mountaineering skills use, their, use those skills to guide explorers on expeditions. In this game, you are a member of the Sherpa community building base camps on Nanga Parbat and trapping animals for food and clothing. Use your cunning and skill to climb to victory. So yeah, during the um, uh, demo I got, it looked like a lot of fun. So me and my little Grogu got a demo of this game from Dr. Finn and we talked about it and so out of all the games he had I asked for a review copy of this one and it comes with really nice components it has these really cool animals and stuff and it's really clever and you know I'll discuss it more in the um, weekly playback if I've had a chance to play it I only got a demo of this so I haven't had a chance to play it but hopefully at some point I'll discuss it and how it plays because it seems like a really clever like game where you're trying to get points and, and the way you get them was pretty clever I really liked it um, from the demo. So yeah, so super excited to play that. Um, the next game I will talk about, uh, the next two games I'll talk about because they're from the same publisher, are Shobu and The Dudleys. Um, so these are published by, oh gosh, uh, Smirk and Dagger games. Yeah, that's it, Smirk and Dagger. Um, so I stopped by their booth because they had uh, reposted, re-Instagrammed, I don't know what the word is. They had reposted a photo that I had posted of uh, the night cage. So the night cage, I had um, posted a photo of Grogu wanting to play the night cage. We didn't get a chance to play it during Thanksgiving. So they had like reposted that photo on their Instagram. So I was like, oh, I'll stop by and just like say hi and let them know that Grogu still hasn't had a chance to play the night cage. So I had a chat with them and I got this game, which is a two player game, I believe. Yes, it's a two player like strategy game. So it says it's a beautifully crafted abstract strategy game for two players. So the way it was described, it seemed like something that would you'd like if you like games like chess, which I really do. I really love chess, but I really, really suck at it. So and the components in this are really beautiful. It has some wood boards in it and some like stones. Um, I can just show you. And then like a rope too. So it comes with like four of these wood boards and two of them are a little bit darker. And then it comes with a bunch of stones, white and black, and a rope to separate the playing area. So yeah, really stunning components um, and it has a really good rating on BGG. So I'm super excited to play this. Um, yeah. And then the other game I got from them is The Dudleys, which is a card game for 
two, three to five players. So yeah, um, he described, the um, publisher described this as being like a kind of like a really cutthroat like Uno kind of game, like a mean funny Uno game with like different cards of the seven deadly sins. So yeah, it says just three of the seven deadlies you will encounter in this devious little card game, greed, pride, and wrath. Do your best to rid yourself of them all as soon as you can while your opponents do their damnedest to fill your hand with more. Play as many cards as you can each turn of the same suit, number value, or a straight of any length. Empty your hand three times to win and become the envy of all of your friends. So yeah, um, it has cool artwork and it just seemed like a fun game. It seemed like a fun game that would, you know, be like a good filler for game nights. So I'm looking forward to playing that. Let's move on to um, Flourish. So I picked up two games from Starling Games, the publisher of Everdell. I stopped by and got some photos in the Everdell tree. So maybe I'll just pop one up here. Um, yeah, so I was able to get a review copy of Flourish, which looks absolutely beautiful. It is designed by James and Carissa Wilson, and it is for one to seven players. So I'm really like looking forward to checking this out, like a game for one to seven players. It's kind of hard to find games like that. I actually spent a lot of time punching this out and putting it together at PAX Unplugged and then we didn't even end up playing it. So I haven't yet played this game but it's like got so many components like you put these things together and it took a long time to put all of these together. I thought the blue ones were the hardest to put together. Those were a pain. Um, I like these purple ones. Yeah there's like a bunch of stuff that you had to put together. Um, I think I haven't shown you guys the green one yet. Yeah, so it's like you're just building up a garden. I don't, I read the rule book. I hadn't yet come across all of these like things yet. So I don't know how they come into play, but like some really gorgeous cards. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to trying this out because it's hard to find like medium weight games that are for this many players. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully playing this and seeing what it's like. So yeah, so that's Flourish from Starling Games. Um, the next game I got from Starling Games is Panorama, which looks absolutely stunning. So this is designed by Alex Winter. How appropriate of a name because like in this game it looks like they're in some snowy landscapes and there are some absolutely stunning cards. Um, the inside of the box is just gorgeous too. Let me just show you. Like that is just so freaking beautiful. I just love it. So yeah, so this is for, from Starling Games and this is for how many players? Do, 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 do. We're, uh, sorry, here it is. One to six players. So this is a game for one to six players and I just want to show you some of the cards because they look really beautiful. Yeah, just absolutely gorgeous cards. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love them. So there's this one deck and then there's the other deck. So there's the purple deck and then there's like this blue deck. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to playing this because the artwork just like is so freaking gorgeous. And I, so I think you're just basically putting together panoramas. Like you're just, you know, going to be drafting cards somehow, I think, and just making like a panorama. That's my guest based on the name. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm looking forward to playing this as well. Oh no, here, okay. And then it comes with some like, like cardboard tokens of some kind. So that is also from Starling Games. So those are the two games I got from Starling. Um, let me just put these on the floor for now. Okay. The next game I will talk about is from Inside Up Games, City Builder, Ancient World. And this will, I will be talking about in the uh, tomorrow's or Saturday's weekly playback video because I actually had a chance to play this last night at game night and I really liked it. So this is from Inside Up Games and it is designed by Andre Philippe and illustrated by Andrew Dorland. And it's got a really great insert with like a ton of like cardboard pieces and really nice components. The insert is really great because like you can like remove stuff and then you'll have space for like some of the meeple token thingies. Yeah so you're basically building a city. It's uh, one of those games where you have something I mean I'll go into more detail tomorrow but you have like 
like a thing between you and each opponent to one of your sides and you're basically building a city you're drafting you're not drafting you're drawing tiles and placing them down to build a city and you're doing this very competitively because you are trying to populate your city with certain um, settlers um, so you have commoners and nobles and it's a kind of like a race because the way it scores is really interesting and how you get those settlers and nobles is really interesting so I'll go into a bit more detail tomorrow but I really like this game so I am super glad I got a review copy of it and I'm really actually looking forward to playing this a lot more um, so the next few review copies just three more games left um, I think yep so the next three games are from Capstone Games. So I stopped by the Capstone booth and I was able to get a review copy of Glass Road. So I also played this, so I'll be able to talk about it in my next playback video. So this is a, an Uwe Rosenberg game. And this is like, you know, a new printing, a new edition from Capstone Games. Um, so I can just show you some of the... So yeah, there's no insert. It's just like a bunch of stuff in the box. So you're going to have like a bunch of cards and like cardboard and like you basically uh, you'll have this this is like your thing I'll explain it tomorrow but it's like a more of a like it's like a very classic euro game right so it's not like these new flashy euros that people are coming out with these days it has a very classic euro feel to it and I'll discuss it tomorrow um, but yeah, so this was one review copy I got and I was able to play a, a game of it at PAX Unplugged. The other review copy I got from Capstone Games is a Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling game, Savannah Park, um, which has, you know, nice com cardboard components in it. So in this game, you I think you're just basically populating your park with different animal tokens. So this is like the scoring board and then you have this and you're going to have tokens for your own player color so like yeah so there's like four different sets of tokens with diff all kinds of different animals on it and like each player will have like a meerkat a guide and a lion I think the lion is for an expansion of some kind so yeah so I'm looking forward to playing this especially since I I think Paris was my first Kramer and that Kiesling game that I played I think so I'm looking forward to trying this one since I did like Paris even though we played it a bit incorrectly but yeah but I think the way we played it incorrectly actually led to it being a quicker game and the length of the game was something that people complained about so hopefully um, that will be a good game. So the next game I got and the last game I have to discuss here today is Corrosion by Stefan Bauer published by Capstone Games. Um, so I'm actually playing this tonight so I'm looking forward to that. So I already put the boards together. So it's got this. I honestly don't even know how to play yet, so I'm going to have to do that. So when I was walking by a table playing this game, I actually saw these gear components sitting on the table. And um, he, the owner of Capstone had given me the metal gears, like the, um, the like deluxe metal gear components, but they're all the same color. So like they're all silver. They're really nice. They're really nice and chunky. But when I was walking by, I was like, wait a second, how come that person has like brown metal gears? And I honestly, I swear to God, I thought that these brown pieces I were I was seeing from afar were metal. Like that is how nice these cardboard components are. Like as I was walking by, the, the shine on them made them look like metal, like the way that they are. And they're actually much thicker than the other like cardboard components in this game. So they're super nice. So honestly, if you get corrosion, I don't even think you need the upgraded like metal bits. Like these are just super nice. So yeah. Um, I'll be taking pictures of this and posting it. I don't know how it plays yet, but since I'm playing it tonight, I'll be able to discuss it in the next weekly playback video. So those were all the review copies I got. So now I can talk a bit about being at PAX as a content creator. So in years past, I was just a board gamer when I would go um, and it was fun to play so many board games. Like my days would just be spent in the first look section basically just playing a crap ton of board games this time so i'll talk about the whole experience so i got there thursday um and i went to the mixer event which was fine um it was very crowded it was a really small location with a ton of people and a ton of people who i know don't like me so it was like really awkward being in this really small space with so many people who i know think that i'm this like evil bad person or whatever um 
but luckily I was able to chat with a handful of really amazing people there. Um, one of my friends was there and I was able to chat with them and uh, their uh, significant other for quite a bit which was nice. I was able to chat with some people who follow my content and you know were saying hi and stuff like that so I was able to meet a you know a good number of people. I ran into um, Meg, I don't know what her uh, Professor Meg I think she goes by on Instagram. I ran into her on the elevator and had a little chat with her um, but yeah so overall that was nice. I did not stay super long at the Mixer event so um, after I was done chatting with my friends I basically left um, just because again it was a very small venue and just awkward being stuck in such a small space with so many people who I don't like and who don't like me so so yeah um, it's not that you know like there was like no point to staying there really um because I knew that I would get a chance to like meet all the publishers I wanted to over the next couple of days so the only bad experience I had, like, so one of my worries being at PAX Unplugged this year was, of course, you know, there's been all this talk about how I'm dangerous, which is, of course, not true because, you know, I've explained all of that in past videos. So that was a concern um, being at PAX, but there was only really one negative um, experience I had, which is when I was talking to a certain designer slash publisher, and this was early on Friday, like his was the first booth I actually went to on Friday, I believe. And as I'm talking to him, someone else, a content creator, a Twitch streamer came up to us and like, there's no one else around us. We're like involved in a conversation and she cuts me off and just starts talking to this designer slash publisher as though I wasn't even there, as though I was not even talking to him, as though I didn't exist. And I was like, well, that's very uh, rude. <laughs> so I just basically had to walk away awkwardly. Like that was just a very um yeah that was very rude so anyway um you know I don't know if this uh, content creator just felt like wow you know Sarah shouldn't get to talk to anyone so I'm just gonna go and cut her off but like you know that reflects more on her than it does on me and I ended up going back to this designer and publisher um on Sunday and he was very nice and he uh, demoed a game for me and Grogu and then gave me a review copy and we had a nice little chat so yeah so you know no damage was done there if that's what she was trying to do because I just went back another day. So that was like the major negative experience I had. Otherwise, it was a very good experience. I got to meet so many people. I met so many people who I, you know, know and admire online and it was amazing to finally meet them in person. I got to meet some people who watch my content and enjoy my content. So of course, it was awesome to meet them um, and have a chat with them in person. So yeah, some like highlights were, of course, meeting um, Henry Audubon, the designer of Parks, he actually gave me some really good suggestions for my elephant game that I'm designing that, uh, you know, I didn't even think of before. So he gave me some really good food for thought for my elephant game design. I got to meet Ryan Courtney, the designer of Curious Cargo and Pipeline. So, you know, Curious Cargo is one of my favorite two player games, even though I totally suck at it. So it was really nice to meet him. I actually got a picture of him, so I'll just throw it up right there. I got to meet Tim Wernig of Thunderworks Games. So it was really a pleasure to meet him. Um, who else? I mean, I met so many people. It was just really a great experience. I met other content creators. It was just a lot of fun. And honestly, I did not get to play as many games as I would have liked. The only games I think I played at PAX Unplugged were, I mean, I had all these games in the first look section that I wanted to check out, but I was spending so much time just meeting people and meeting publishers that there was very little time to play games. Oh, of course I got to meet Ant Lab Games, Anthony and Francis, who are just wonderful. I got to meet them on Friday and yeah, I just love them. So there's a picture of us. Um, so the games I got to play at PAX Unplugged were Glass Road, Micro Macro, Sweetlandia, I think, I feel like there's one more game, uh, is that it? Gosh, that cannot be it. I feel like there should be something else. Oh yeah, uh, I played um, In Human Conditions, which is a game designed by the same designers, publishers, uh, Secret Hitler. Um, a friend of mine in my friend group bought the game and we tried playing a seven player game of it which was a disaster so then the next day I, I think we played it really wrong so then the next day I went back to the demo booth and did a demo which was a lot of fun so just the two player demo with the designer himself um, so that was fun um, I don't think I played anything else yeah, so like I said, played very few games but um, was super busy despite that like despite you know uh, playing hardly any games. I was insanely busy. Oh yeah, I got to demo Rolling Heights, which is a 
being it's coming out on Kickstarter from Alder Rock Games and that is a lot of fun like I absolutely loved Rolling Heights and I think that's one you should definitely keep your eyes out for so yeah Rolling Heights by John DeClaire which will be on Kickstarter I think in February I could be wrong January February I also got to see like a kind of like a demo or like an explanation of the new Prospero Hall game that's going to be coming out. It's like a Jurassic Park legacy game, which looks amazing. And I'm not usually a fan of legacy games, but this one looks really good. And it like starts at the beginning of the whole Jurassic Park series and you get to unveil stuff as you play. And if you know you do badly, you might not get to unveil certain things. And then at the end of it, which is the awesome part, at the end of it all, you will have a board game that you can actually play again and again. So you don't have to destroy the whole thing and throw it away. You will actually have a board game that you can play, which I think is awesome. So yeah, I was super excited to check that out. Um, I can't recall if I played anything else. So I think that might have been it actually then. Hmm. So yeah, not too many games played, but again, a super busy experience meeting a lot of fun, you know, a lot of people. It was just super fun to meet everyone, just super fun to walk around and be surrounded by games and yeah, just be surrounded by publishers and meet publishers. Just it was really a lot of fun and I'm seriously looking forward to more cons in the future. Um, as a content creator, it was just a different experience, but still a lot of fun. And yeah, I can't wait to do more cons in the future and meet more of you, hopefully. So for those of you who couldn't make it, you know, I'm sorry that we could not meet, but I hope that, you know, in the future, I will be able to get to go to more cons like Gen Con and um, what's the other one? Origins. I hope to do those next year if I get, if I can. Yeah. So I guess that's it. So I know this was super quick but I'm making this video on my lunch break. So, so yeah, it was gonna be quick. Um, yeah, so that was my haul and until my weekly playback video. Until then, bye.